Hello, this is uh, Thomas Grip from Frictional Games and welcome to the second part of the scripting overview. Today I'm going to uh, show off the scripting a little bit deeper and to start it off I'm going to add a player action. Um, to s start with that I'm going to first uh, do an enum for the action called interact and then add the actual action and then add an input for the action. So in our system you can have uh, several inputs for the same action and now it shows the mouse left mouse button for this one. And next up we want to do something with action too. So now I'm entering the player state normal file here and what's um, what that means is that there are several uh, states that the player can have, and normal is what it has from default, but you can also have like a climb ladder state or picked up box state. So just adding code here to check if the action is pressed and if um, the action is the interact action. So I'm just going to start off with uh, showing a little debug message. So entering the game here, pressing, and nothing happens when I press. But um, this is to be expected because you see what happens is when I alt tab and uh, simply um, go to the game and the script is reloaded is that the current state um, is saved so it doesn't reboot the application or anything. And you're checking here in the um, input handler you have a create action here and that's only called at the start of the application. So what I need to do is to press uh, the quick game reload and what that happens is that it simply reloads all the script files and starts everything from the beginning. And uh, there, um, the, the, the good part about the quick game reload is that it caches all the models and textures so it's uh, pre so you don't have to load them again. So it's uh, pretty fast. Now I'm going to try it. And now we have interacting with my button here displayed. Um, that's not very fun. So you're going to try and do something a little bit more fun. But before we get into that, I want to show another thing here. Um, here's uh, I'm just using some helper functions here to cast array from the center of the screen and then check the the closest uh, or the first uh, entity that's uh, hit by the ray. Then I save the entity's name into uh, this focus name variable. Gonna add that uh, property here too as the class and um, also gonna add some debug code. This debug code here um, it displays in the top left corner of the screen. So entering here you see here up top is focus object, so you're just gonna get close to something. Like here's the bag in focus, here's the metal table in focus. Um, now I want to do something with the bag, and as you can um, see here, what we do is that we actually get the entity here, um, and then get the name from it. What you could do is that you can save the handle, which is this one, um, for the entity, and then use that directly. But that can be pretty cumbersome um, when you want to um, ha call user created functions, um, as you need to do a specific interface and so on. So it while it's uh, pretty fast, um, it's it's a bit complicated. So, but right now we we don't want any speed to this. It's only called when a button is pressed. So, what we can use is uh, um, global functions here. And global function is a way of easily communicating uh, across script files. And um, now I'm gonna call the do stuff uh, um, global function. And uh, then I'm gonna add the do stuff function here, and what I'm uh, allowing it to do is just to display a debug message, and then uh, make uh, add a force, upward force. Uh, so we make uh, the the bag jump when we press the button. Um, 
And the uh, interesting about call function is it's pretty easy when you don't have any arguments or any re return values. Otherwise, you would have to add um, the arguments uh, one at a time is using a function and then uh, retrieve them also using a function but this also makes them safe in a way you could have other other ways of doing this but doing uh, doing it like this is totally safe you can't crash the application if you call the function incorrectly um, so I'm gonna try this out starting it up again make sure it's in focus and way it jumps when I press the button and you see it also displays uh, the message and some other errors because I haven't added any physics sounds to this yet and so um, now while I'm in this uh, the prop which is an entity types um, and it's uh, a script file here's it's called prop grab which means that it's a, a prop of the type grab um, and this is totally user made so, so, so you can have any sort of types you want a dragon prop or whatever um, so first of all I'm gonna add a variable to it uh, rotation and then I'm gonna initialize it here in the init and then update the uh, whole rotation with amount of time step uh, every frame every update of the update callback and uh, then what I'm gonna do with this rotation is that I'm gonna make it uh, use it to rotate the um, the, the mesh the, the mesh the, the bag mesh uh, um, around uh, the y-axis so saving that everything's saved going on it rotates and uh, what's cool about this I'm just gonna show here is that if you can see when I um, when I reload the script uh, and, and another thing uh, w when I reload um, the script is that it, it saves uh, um, uh, all of the all of the variables that's in the the current class so when I reload here you can see it just begins from uh, so there's no it doesn't go back to rotation zero um, but it starts over for when it was when I press the button and this is some automatic saving done here so it, it eases up that process too uh, um, you don't have to worry about saving values or anything when you want to make a game save values it just checks what variables are in the script and save those um, so that's uh, very neat and to Change stuff. I want to uh, to end this. I want to do another thing here. So I'm just gonna go opening in the map editor here. I'm gonna add some extra bags here. So, so two extra bags saving, and then go back to the game. Now I need to reload the map here. So I have three bags here, all rotating. And um, say I want to do something. Uh, I want to uh, do something to all of these bags at the same time so I'm just gonna move the focus action here and uh, what's cool about global functions is that you can use wildcard um, in the name so I'm, now I'm calling bag01 and then star and that means that bag01 er, er, every entity whose name starts with uh, bag01 is gonna call uh, is gonna get this call and then I'm gonna get the the, the do stuff call um yeah so saving we're going that all of the bags jump at once wherever i push push i can just make them <laughs> go out into space if i push that uh, uh many times enough and this is also very very simple and and this allows for communications between entities or whatnot if, if if you name them correctly so if you can uh um for example, if the player has some, I don't know, psychic power where he can stop all bullets like uh, Matrix like in the air, then I can just run stop uh, on uh, bullet star and then all bullets because if, uh, if we name all bullets, bullet that is, uh, all of them will just stop me there. And, and you can do that uh, to all of this stuff and you skip itera iterating them and so on. You can, you can even have um, something like, you know, the, a star here and that, that works too so if, if you have a uh, have lots lots of them um just gonna check here so it actually works here yeah you see 
So it, uh, you can add a stars any way you want um, in the name, and that works. Um, it's pretty nice. And uh, that wraps up uh, th this uh, part of the series. So now you have gotten a taste of uh, of the more. Uh, um, advanced, or <laughs> if I could simply call them that, features uh, of the engine. And uh, once again, I just want to see how easy it was to add all this stuff. So there's no recompiling. I only had to reload the uh, the map once when when there were some initialization uh, initialization uh, things that I needed updating with actions. And uh, it's very very nice workflow to this. And it uh, just took a couple of minutes to all of this. Uh, Quite not major, but it, it, it changed the uh, major parts uh, of the code. So uh, uh, very nice. So I'm very. It will be very interesting to make a full game with this system, and also this will be very interesting to modders because you're gonna mod anything you like basically. So ho hope you enjoyed the, this part of the scripting overview, and uh, see you next time if I make another episode. Bye.